Hey guys, this is Matt Brunet, and welcome to Movie News Weekly, hosted by Filmbook. Now, before we begin, let's take a look at what we got in this week's news, which includes Dory beating up a bunch of aliens, remembering Anton Yelchin, who will take on Spider-Man's animated film, The Bear Clumsily Slipped Into Studio Canal, Brian Cranston will return to his origins, Bueller's bringing out his tunes, Disney's possible next big franchise, the closest thing we'll have to a Majora's Mask movie, Elizabeth Shaw is coming back, and so is Darth Vader. So with that said, let's get things started. Not even the most powerful aliens that can destroy planets can withstand the might of a little fish who can easily forget. Finding Dory still remains very strong and first at the box office during this weekend with about $73 million. This even triumphs the new sequel, Independence Day Resurgence, which started in second with more than $40 million. The other new movies this week, The Shallow and The Free State of Jones, began on a low start in fourth and fifth place with less than 17 million and less than 8 million respectively, right under Central Intelligence, which went down to third place with more than 18 million. Following from behind include The Conjuring 2 with about 7.7 .7 million, Now You See Me 2 with more than 5 million, and X-Men Apocalypse with almost 2.5 million. Here is probably a great example of the term, too soon to go. Actor Anton Yelchin has unfortunately passed away at the shockingly young age of 27. His death was reported to be caused by a fatal traffic collision where he was found pinned between his own car and a brick mailbox pillar. What makes his death even more tragic is that he was heading towards a very successful film career, appearing in many mainstream movies including the Smurf movies as Clumsy Smurf, Terminator Salvation as Kyle Reese, and his most popular and beloved role is Chekhov in the Star Trek reboot films. The last time we'll be seeing him in the latter role will be in Star Trek Beyond on July 22, 2016. He will surely be missed. Sure, Lord and Miller are not fully involved with the project, but we do know now who will be in charge. During a press announcement from Sony Pictures Animation, they have announced that Bob Percy Chetty will have his directorial debut with the animated Spider-Man film, written by Phil Lord and Chris Miller. Percy Chetty's career came from a long line of animation, beginning as an in-betweener at Disney from Hercules to Treasure Planet, then moving to DreamWorks as a storyboard artist. His biggest role beforehand was being the head of story for Puss in Boots and The Little Prince. Spider-Man will be coming into animation on December 21st, 2018. Looks like a certain company is really hungry for marmalade. Studio Canal has purchased all the rights to the Paddington Bear brand. Their goal with the bear is to make him as big as possible and even give him several more projects in the future, including a third Paddington movie. The chairman and CEO of Studio Canal, Diddler Loopfer, stated, If you want to be a big European player, you need a 360 degree vision for the properties you own. There is a huge growth potential for us. If you're producing Paddington 2, you have the potential to create TV series, live entertainment, theme parks, merchandising and licensing, video games, and so much more. The second Paddington film will start production this October and is aiming for a late 2017 release. You'll be surprised with the history he has with this movie. Brian Cranston is signing on into the Power Rangers movie, which he will play as Zordon, the creator and mentor of the Rangers. He will be joining the cast that includes Elizabeth Banks, who will be playing the villain Rita Repulsa. Interestingly enough, this will not be the first time that Cranston will be involved with the Power Rangers. Back during the beginning of his career, he was the voice of Twin Man and Snizard in the original 1993 series. Also, it was revealed that the Blue Ranger's name, Billy Cranston, was named after him. Power Rangers will come to the big screen on March 24th, 2017. After all these years, a piece of the 80s will finally unleash its music. For the first time ever, Paramount Pictures and La La Land Records are officially going to release the soundtrack of Ferris Bueller's Day Off for the 30th anniversary of the film. The reason why the soundtrack was never released to the public was because the director, John Hughes, never thought it would sell. In an interview with Lollipop Magazine, he stated, The only official soundtrack that Ferris Bueller's Day Off ever had was from the mailing list. A&M was very angry with me over that. They begged me to put one out, 
But I thought, who'd want all these songs? Some of the songs that might have a strong possibility to be included are Wayne Newton's Dan- Include Wayne Newton's Danke Schoen, Yellow's Oh Yeah, The Flower Pot Man's Beat City, and The English Beat's March of the Swivel Heads. With the announcement of Indiana Jones' big comeback in the future, we might have to expect more than just one movie. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Disney CEO Bob Iger hinted that the company could revive Indiana Jones as a franchise rather than just one movie. He stated, Yes, I do plan on making more Indiana Jones films. I don't think it reached the scale of the universe of Star Wars, but I see making more. It won't be just a one-off. We got Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones in the film, but then what's the direction? I'll have to discuss about what the director is, but I don't want to get into it. The next Indiana Jones movie will be hitting theaters on July 2019. Even after Resurgence, he already has plans on other ways to just destroy the world. Roland Emmerich has signed on with Universal in order to work on his next film, Moonfall, which he already written the script with Harlan Closer and Spencer Cohen. The plot of the film is best described as a mix of Close Encounters of the Third Kind and Emmerich's 2012, where a bunch of people have to save the world from the moon crashing into the Earth. Emmerich has been confirmed to both direct and produce the film. His newest film, Independence Day Resurgence, has just hit theaters this weekend. So she is coming back. Oh, okay, okay, now it makes sense. After allegations that she will not return for the sequel, Numi Rapace is said that she will be coming back as Elizabeth Shaw in Ridley Scott's Alien Covenant. Sources say that Rapace has been seen in Australia for weeks working on the set for the film. She will be joining a cast that includes Danny McBride, Catherine Watterson, Damien Bichir, and Billy Crudup. The next Alien movie will be coming into theaters on August 4th, 2017. Luke, Leia, and Solo made their comeback last year. Now it's time for the big villain's turn. Darth Vader has been confirmed to return in the franchise's first spin-off film, Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. On top of that, it has also been confirmed that James Earl Jones will be returning to provide the voice. However, there has been no confirmation on who will be physically portraying the character. Also, it has been confirmed that Forrest Whitaker's character will be Saw Gerrera, who originally came from the Clone Wars animated series. Rogue One will officially be hitting theaters on December 16th. And that's all I've got for this week. Thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to head on down to film-book.com for all the latest movie and TV news, along with their columns on the box office and their theatrical release schedule. Also, you can follow them on whatever social media you'd like. And while you're at it, you can follow me on my YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter if you're more into stuff like animation, Disney, and my weird sense of humor. If you are watching this on YouTube, then hit that like button and come subscribe to us, and also leave a little comment on what you think on the news this week. If you are listening to this on a podcast on iTunes or any other podcast service, then don't forget to rate and review what you just heard. Tune in next time for another round of Movie News Weekly, and until next week, see you later, dudes!